five of Foundation of Faith, class three, on the Holy Spirit. I trust that you have learned so much from the previous lessons and you have seen the importance of having a relationship with the Holy Spirit. I would like to show you a few things from the scriptures about receiving the infilling of the Holy Spirit, which is what this lesson is about. What does it mean to be filled with the Holy Spirit? First, we go to the book of Acts of the Apostles, when the Apostles first received the gift of the Holy Spirit. What happened? What was the accompanying sign of being filled with the Holy Spirit? The book of Acts, chapter 2. We'll go to the book of Acts, chapter 2. We'll begin to read from verse 1. It says, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them cloven tongues as of fire, and one sat on each of them. And then they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So here we see on the first occasion where the apostles received, and of course the disciples, because it wasn't just the apostles. When they received the Holy Spirit, they were filled and they began to speak with other tongues. And as we are going to see through many other passages, anytime people get filled with the Holy Spirit, they also speak with other tongues. Of course, the Holy Spirit is the one by whom we get saved. So when you are saved, you actually do have the Holy Spirit, but there's such the thing as getting filled with the Holy Spirit. In the book of Acts, chapter 19, we go to the book of Acts, chapter 19, Apostle Paul met some disciples at Ephesus and he asked them if they had received the Holy Spirit on getting saved. In Acts, chapter 19, I'll start reading from verse 2. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, We have not even so much as heard that there is any Holy Spirit. So it means they were saying, oh, we didn't even hear that there is the Holy Spirit. And he said to them, into what then were you baptized? And they had that conversation. And then verse 4, Paul said, John indeed baptized you. And then he introduced them to the Lord. And in verse 5, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, that's verse 6, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and they prophesied. So we see here again, they got filled with the Holy Spirit, they spoke with other tongues, and they prophesied. Another reference, we go to Acts chapter 10. The book of Acts chapter 10 is the story of Cornelius. Cornelius was a Gentile. At that time, um, the apostles were so accustomed. As a matter of fact, in the Bible, the first record of Gentiles getting saved was Cornelius. And so when he was going to get saved, the evidence or how they knew that God had opened the door of salvation to the Gentiles was actually that uh, when Cornelius got saved, he also got filled with the Holy Spirit and they saw an important sign. So in Acts chapter 10, I'm going to read very quickly. In verse 44, after Peter had you know, preached to the whole household. The Bible tells us in verse 44, while Peter was still speaking these words, you know, explaining who Jesus is and how to be saved, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were, who heard the word, and those of the circumcision who believed were astonished. And many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the Gentiles also. So they noticed that the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out on the Gentiles. And they saw a sign. That's how they knew that they had received the Holy Spirit. It says, For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. So they heard them speaking with other tongues and magnifying God. So when we get filled with the Holy Spirit, we do speak in other tongues. And we are able to communicate with God in a language that is different from our natural language so or the languages we may have learned you know uh, in our relationship with other people in 
the book of First Corinthians, very quickly, Apostle Paul wrote a very interesting treatise about tongues in that passage. And it is important to see a few of the things that he said. He says, I'll read from verse 1. For true love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. In verse 2 he says, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. So it shows us here that when you speak in other tongues, because some people like to ask questions about you know, what speaking in tongues is, why is it that I don't understand when I'm speaking, how am I even supposed to speak something that I do not understand? So Apostle Paul teaches here, he says, when an individual is speaking in tongues, he's not speaking to men, but he's speaking to God. So it is a direct communication with God. It is the Spirit of God giving you words to say, and then you speaking those inspired words by faith and understanding that that connects you directly to God, not to men, not to any intermediaries, but to God himself. Say, for no man understands him. So he says, no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. That's very important to understand. When you are speaking in tongues, nobody actually understands you, except, of course, as we find out if you read the entire um, chapter that there can be gifts of interpretation of tongues also in operation. However, when an individual speaks in tongues, nobody actually understands him except in the occasion where there is the gift of interpretation of tongues. And another point to notice is that when a person is speaking in tongues, even he doesn't understand. That's very important. Let's go to verse 13 of the same chapter. It says, Therefore, let him who speaks in the tongue pray that he may interpret. Now he's talking here in a church setting or in a gathering of believers. When you speak in tongues, there is no benefit to people around you except there's interpretation. So, but between you and God, if you are just talking to God, which you don't need to um, interpret to anybody, but you can also have the interpretation of your own tongues. Interpretation of tongues is not a necessity. Understanding what is said is not a necessity before we can speak in tongues. So in verse 14, Apostle said, for, um, Paul says, For if I pray, so he's talking about himself now, in a tongue, my spirit prays. If I pray in tongues, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is he saying? He says, even I do not understand when I pray in other tongues. So it is completely okay if you do not understand. And as a matter of fact, the most likely thing is you wouldn't understand what you are saying when you pray in other tongues. But it is a valid gift. And it is the gift of God to you. So you pray in other tongues, it helps you to have a new dimension of relationship, both with God, of course, which is through His Spirit. Like the way um, Kenneth Higgin always said, he says that praying in tongues is the key to every other spiritual gift. As you begin to pray in other tongues, you begin to experience the Holy Spirit in a dimension that is more than what you may have ever experienced before. And so right now, we'd like to pray with you so you can also be filled with the Holy Spirit and pray in other tongues because it is the gift of God unto you. I recall right now uh, an experience or a, a couple of experiences where I've had to pray with people over the phone, you know, to receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. You do not have to be in a church, maybe sitting at a, a desk in your home right now watching this or just with your phone in your hand, but you can be filled with the Holy Spirit now. And all you need to do just say, Father, I receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And right now, I'm going to pray in other tongues. Just go ahead right now and begin to pray in other tongues because the gift of the Holy Spirit is for you. And if you receive, you can begin to speak in other tongues. So whatever words come to you right now, those words that are not in your understanding, those are the words the Holy Spirit is giving to you. They are utterances. Now begin to speak them forth you find out that you are going to be in a new level with God. Go ahead and just pray in the Spirit for a while.
while the query is for a while, I'm going to see you in the next class.